here in the deepest pocket of poverty in Jefferson County, Louisville, Kentucky. There's a lot of good people who are prepared and deserving of opportunity. Many of those people are young people. Sadly, in Russell, uh, the average income for each family is uh, a little bit under $15,000. That's for the entire family. Uh, that's everything added all together as compared to our population uh, in general at about $45,000. So that's 300% that's, that's difference. Vast amounts of dollars, however small they are, that are created by Russell residents are spent outside Russell because there are no businesses to spend them in Russell. When we look in West Louisville, it's difficult to find a decent sit-down restaurant. It's, it's difficult to find a nice entertainment venue. So we call it a, within a rock and hard place. The residents who do have income must go elsewhere and spend it. But you just can't have a community where all the money you earn, 80 to 90% of it goes out. That is not sustainable. You just can't create jobs and commerce and the kind of uh, uh, business activities that are needed for the community to thrive. We realize that things need to change in order for this to be viable on into the next series of decades. Been involved in this work now for 27 years as the uh, president and CEO of Louisville Central Community Centers, and we refer to that as LCCC, three C's. It's a community based organization, which means it's really private and nonprofit. Our work is really chartered work around a vision and mission of really helping people become more self reliant. The biggest challenge uh, for the work that we have couched under the West of Ninth, which is a visioning project about seeing the community be transformed probably is uh, helping the residents of the community see value uh, in both change and opportunities to really be successful as a neighborhood. Our mantra is to be a catalyst for change. We aspire to be a high impact organization here at Louisville Central Community Center. We're really bought into the idea that transforming this community from an economic front is the most important thing that we need to do. We think a lot of these social ills and other kinds of impacts uh, that affect families are tied to economics. So we made a huge investment in the Russell neighborhood. It started about 11 years ago, and um, when it's done, it'll be about a $12 million investment here within the Russell neighborhood, which is significant because there is no comparable investments that have been made in the past 20 or so years here. We have a lot of things to be proud of. Uh, a lot of our existing institutions are doing upgrades to their properties. We've seen a number of uh, small businesses that are now uh, developing and, and uh, building out their spaces to uh, locate in Russell. We've attracted Universal Louisville uh, to join with us and create a footprint in West Louisville. The Housing Authority has been successful in securing a federal HUD uh, planning grant under the Choice Neighborhood Initiative. Our mayor has been very supportive of the work. We are beginning to get people who say, how can I help us have this kind of community that we're talking about? You know, how can we help get the jobs that we need? And so we need help and assistance because we really don't know what it takes, what the investment is needed, uh, who's most likely to help us with this kind of work, uh, where we get the kind of support that we need to both locally and regionally and nationally. What are the opportunities out there we have no idea that exist? University of Kentucky, uh, a couple of their students there who worked on our project, the visioning project, got excited about going beyond just a vision concept. And they did some exploration and did some research and came back. That's when I first heard about AIA. And then one of the graduate students, Jared Kalin, led the effort in putting together a grant. He did it all as a student project. Uh, and we won the grant. And here we are today, on the day of this interview, we actually are here actually implementing the assessment project for, uh, for the AIA. AIA awards uh, an SAT to you know, a small number of communities every year. And then, and then they go about rounding up a, a nationwide team of experts, an interdisciplinary team, to address the problems that the community is facing. 
and they fly us in and we do this three-day design stride and we leave with, you know, with recommendations, with really tangible recommendations, not just design recommendations, but process recommendations, infrastructure recommendations, organizational recommendations. And in three days, the goal is to really change the way that people think about their communities and give them a different perspective on, on how to address these, these formally, apparently intractable problems. And it's just genius, it's brilliant stuff. Part of what makes the, the team successful is we're not a stakeholder. We're not being paid. First of all, we're all volunteers. And the AIA brings us here because we have areas of expertise. So we apply our expertise in a very objective way. We're here for a very, very short period of time uh, trying to wrestle with the uh, economic development challenges I think is going to be a formidable uh, issue. If you can't find jobs, viable jobs for people, it's really hard to do anything else. We have a great volunteer team who has led in developing this work for these three days. So they're all downstairs so helping and making sure we put out the fires. We're working specifically with a neighborhood of what's called a West Louisville, which is a largely residential, uh, largely African American, and uh, largely uh, impoverished neighborhood. I think there's very high unemployment here, very low average median incomes, very little in the way of commercial activity, and no, and the real problem is there's no planning for this area either. Because of its proximity to downtown Louisville and its role as a gateway to the rest of West Louisville, its condition really just doesn't make any sense to have this uh, corridor which has so many assets and had such a storied history be in the kind of dormant condition it's in. Our first day is our, is our research day. Uh, ask a lot of questions. We have a lot of interviews set up. We call them stakeholder interviews. We do a little tour. And then in the evening, we have a community meeting where we invite people from the neighborhood to come in and talk to us too. Uh, we can talk about all the other uh, activities go into building a community, but we've got to reach uh, the hearts and minds of the residents. Having local participation to me is part of local capacity building. Then people who are in the community or of the community uh, are part of recognizing what a problem or an issue is, and they're also part of the solution, so they get to own that. And when you own something, you uh, are more protective of it. It allows the community that we're mobilizing around this SDAT to, to really be, be a part of this long-term uh, visioning for transformational change. We need to hear the voice of the community in terms of what their visions are, what are some of the immediate needs. To better build your community, you need people from your community. When this is all said and done, it's going to be the neighborhood residents in Russell and West Louisville who must lead and drive this project. Today is the kind of pivot day. So everyone kind of says, this is what I'd like to do, this is how I'd like to supplement what I learned yesterday. And then we just try to throw out a kind of, a, a kind of an outline of the presentation. Tomorrow, the whole day is just heads down, put the presentation together. The next 48 hours will be relatively sleepless, but we'll be engaged in sharing our perspectives with one another, throwing ideas uh, up against the wall or on the table or on the ceiling. Today is like that pivot day where we kind of begin to get our messages together and get our final views kind of organized. Then tomorrow we'll really work on just presenting it and making sure that whatever we're going to talk about reflects what is uh, actionable. When we go away, you know, we get in a plane and go home, uh, someone's going to have to, is going to have to be in charge of those next couple of steps. You know, we want to be sure that there's enough traction, we get enough, we get enough you know, understanding and buy-in that those next steps will be taken. It's been a fantastic uh, two days thus far. Yesterday was just wonderful to see community engagement for real, all the resident population coming out and having a conversation with us about the future of this community. Today uh, is really a, a keen observation of how this project really works. We've seen our wonderful visitors, our wonderful volunteers from throughout the country working in a room all day long, really strategizing, trying to figure it out, and it's all been done on our behalf. And I've been into a number of planning sessions, but I've never experienced one as intense as this is. What we want to do is make sure that we can translate what we heard into a roadmap, into a plan that will harness all that energy.
I think what we'll get out of tonight's presentation is um, a uh, better understanding of what the people in this community are wanting to see uh, out of their neighborhood. People feel like they've had a say, their voice has been heard, and even if we may differ on how that direction needs to go going forward, um, that uh, everyone's had the opportunity to participate in the process. A little nervous uh, because we don't know what uh, the recommendations are or the suggestions are. We were very clear and, and intentional about letting the team know that we have high expectations here. For this organization to kind of be the, the impetus for change is big. Good evening. and. Uh, Welcome. Uh, my name is Sam Watkins, a junior, and I'm the president and CEO of Louisville Central Community Centers. I'm delighted to welcome the Sustainable Design Assessment Team, multidisciplinary team of nationally recognized AIA professionals who volunteer their time to identify ways to encourage desirable changes in communities. Then here's the challenge. Here's the monster. Here's the Here's the, here's the elephant in the room, is this, is this boulevard, is this 9th Street wall. You need to be talking about sustainability. There has to be a significant investment in human capital. It's not just about finding jobs and employment, but helping them to become entrepreneurs. It's small businesses that produce the majority of the country's jobs. It's ambitious, it's ambitious, but you could imagine a one-story podium around those buildings that brings commercial activity right out to the street and help define this as a strong 100% corner. Those monies can be made available at very, very low interest rates. They have to be paid back, but the interest rates can be as low as 1 or 2% over a 20-year period. We think this is an under-leveraged, huge opportunity. That means that you're going to be attracting all the resources that everyone else has. And that's really how you, how you win. That's the key to your success. Uh, we've done a lot of things here. We've covered a lot of territory. We're going to be trying to organize ourselves uh, uh, around uh, the strategy that's unfolded this evening about how best to pursue this work. Thanks so much to the team. We appreciate all that you've done for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm excited. I want to be part of the process. I want to be part of the solution. So uh, I'm, I'm ready to work. They were engaging in terms of involving the public. And, and most important thing is they did it in three days. Most definitely to bring some jobs to the area. There's a lot of short-term things that we can focus on, getting community engagement, getting, getting the community around the vision. Now we can, uh, we can push for consensus around a plan that has been presented by a neutral party. Uh, that has no bones to pick, I mean, it has no political connection, none of those things that are, can get in the way. This just better positions this community uh, to be a magnet for investment. The SDAT team is probably one of the most encouraging things that has happened in recent memory. In 10 years, I would come back expecting to see that the spine that's existing now, you know, it's filled out. We have a plan now. We never had one before. Now we do. It's all about creating a community that's designed for the generation to come. So it's time for it to be transformed.